Hi, it's Dr. Eric ball and we're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. And today we're going to talk about bile, ox bile, um, and hypothyroid symptoms. So it's not unusual for people who have hypothyroid sy symptoms, hypothyroid condition, to have problems with bile and gall gallbladder function. And so one of the things that's often used to help people is ox bile, and it can be a miracle for some people. It can be really, really beneficial, and I use it quite a bit. But we've gotta be careful sometimes when we use ox bile. I'm gonna go through why they can actually induce or exacerbate hypothyroid symptoms. But first, let's talk about what bile is used for and why it's important. So bile is how your body, um, in, you, your body uses bile to, to absorb fats and fat-soluble vitamins. It also helps in the detoxification process of like estrogens and, and cholesterol and things like that. So it helps get toxins out of the body. The third major role for it is as an antimicrobial. It helps keep the small intestine clear and uh, clean of, of, anti, of, the, of microbes. So it really has three, these three primary functions. And there's some more, but these are the three primary ones. And so what we often see with people who have hypothyroid symptoms and hypothyroid conditions is they have chronic dysbiosis and gut infections. And if it's in the small intestine, we call that SIBO, small intestinal bowel overgrowth. And usually one of the reasons that people have SIBO or have multiple episodes of SIBO, especially after they've done some type of gut protocol, is that they just don't have healthy bile to keep that small intestine clean and clear. And so, in an effort to try and help patients, a lot of times uh, practitioners in the functional medicine space will use a bile, bile supportive products. Um, a couple of products, one of the products I really like is a product from Apex called Bilamin. But some people you like to use just straight ox bile, and I've used it with some patients and I like it as well. But we have to be careful because taking straight ox bile, especially in somebody who already has biliary stasis or cholestasis, uh, or a backup of bile secretion into the bile ducts um, can have increased bile salts uh, backing up into their serum. And if they have too high of bile salts, bile salts in their serum, it can actually inhibit TSH. And so if they already have biliary stasis, they're already getting bile salts backing up and be starting to accumulate in their serum, and then they take a bunch of ox bile to support their digestive process, once those uh, the bile goes the bile salts get into this into the digestive tract they're absorbed back through the intestine and they can wind up back in the serum and so now you have bile salts from biliary stasis for, or from the backup in the liver and then you add the acu uh, the other bile salts from supplementation and now you've got an excessive amount of bile salts in the serum and what happens is is this excessive amount of bile salts in the serum can actually induce a hypothyroid state. Now, it doesn't just cause an elevation of TSH. What typically happens is, is that the bile salts actually stimulate the production of deiodinase 2 at the pituitary gland. And so when they increase D2 activity, that increases the conversion of T4 to T3, and we get the pituitary gland getting saturated with T3. And when the T the pituitary gland is saturated with T3, that causes a reduction in TSH, or a decreased thyroid stimulating hormone. Well, as you know, if you reduce TSH, then you have decreased T4 and T3 production, and now your serum TSH and T4 drops, which means there's less T4 and T3 to get into the peripheral cells, and now you have an increase of hypothyroid symptoms. So. If you have gallbladder problems, if you have biliary stasis, if you have a hypothyroid condition, and you're considering taking ox bile, take it cautiously. If you get an increase in your hypothyroid symptoms, switch from straight ox bile to a bile supportive product like Bilamin from Apex, which has things that will help with the production and the thinning of the bile. It'll help just support bile physiology without giving you straight ox bile. Okay, that could be a great thing to do. Who's at risk for developing uh, bile, bile salt induced hypothyroidism? Well, if your TSH is already lab low normal or low, you probably want to be cautious. If your T4 and T3 levels are, be are below the functional range 
which would be low normal range on a regular lab range, you probably want to be cautious taking it. If you already know you have uh, biliary and gallbladder and liver problems, you may not want to be taking straight ox bile. But start, if you decide to do it, or if your practitioner recommends it for you, start slow. If you even get an inkling of an increase in hypothyroid symptoms, it's probably because of the excessive bile salts floating around in your serum, and it's increasing T3, uh, T3 production in your pituitary gland, and it's reducing your TSH. So this is another reason why when you ask a practitioner to run a thyroid panel, you have to run more than TSH. Because you could have hypothyroid symptoms, but have low TSH, not because your T4 and T3 values are too high, and that's causing your TSH to drop, but your TSH could be low just because you have biliary stasis or bile salts backing up into the serum suppressing your TSH. So your TSH can look like low like your, hypo, like your hyperthyroid and yet if the doctor ran a T4, T3, free T4, free T3, they would actually see that the serum levels of thyroid hormone are actually low. So again, if you take ox bile to support your digestion, be cautious if you have low thyroid function already or you have hypothyroid symptoms already, or your lab levels are low because the increase in bile salts could suppress TSH, drop your T4 and T3 production by your thyroid gland, and increase your hypothyroid symptoms. So hopefully that helped. Look forward to another Thyroid Thursday edition next Thursday. Take care.